use you. He will use me. He will use us all together in Jesus' name. You may have your seat at this moment. We are looking at the subject of the Great Commission. Go. The Great Commission. Go. It's not just a commission. It's not just an ordinary commission, but a great one. And an obedience to that great commission is a great obedience. But then flip it around. Any disobedience to that commission is a great disobedience for which you and I will pay for on the last day. But I pray that instead of paying for disobedience, we'll be rewarded for obedience in Jesus' name. Amen. In the book of Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20, here we see the Lord Jesus giving his final word to the disciples, instructing and commanding them, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And the church say, Amen. Amen. The Lord has not sent us to go alone. He has sent us with the promise of his backing. He has sent us with the promise of his companionship. He has sent us with the promise of resolve coming from our efforts and exploits. But then we need to understand that we've got to be obedient to the Lord. You remember? If we are going to do the will of God, it's not going to be without challenges. But the Lord is greater than those challenges. Yeah. I need a better one. Yeah. The sower in the book of Matthew chapter 13, he went out sowing. Go ye therefore, the sower in obedience to the law of sowing and reaping, went out sowing. And according to the scripture, the sower was not like many of us today, that we just stay in one place and pray and pray and pray for something to happen. The Lord wants us not just to pray, but to also act. Because faith, on one hand, needs work on the other hand. If you are praying, you should be able to say, Lord, this is the seed I am putting in the ground that I want you to bless. But if there is no seed in the ground, if there is no exploit in any way or form, if there is no action of faith, then your faith, according to the scripture, is dead. Matthew chapter 13. The same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a sheep and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore, and he spake, and he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, Israel went forth to sow. And when he sowed, and somebody here would leave this place and beginning to sow in Jesus' name. And when he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them all. Some fell upon stony places, where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprang up, because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Your seed will not wither. Your labor will not be wasted. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up, 
and choke them. But other fell into the good ground. That is your portion. That is my portion. And brought forth fruit. Some a hundredfold. Some sixtyfold. Some thirtyfold. Who had ears to hear? Let him hear. Somebody here today will hear. Amen. And somebody here today will get up, get out, and begin to get something done in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ye therefore, is the command of the master. Go ye therefore, is the injunction. Go ye therefore, is not an advice. It's, it, it is a commandment that must be obeyed. And when we are asked to go, go ye. Those four letters, let's look at them. Because recently, the Lord has been ministering to me personally on those four letters. Go ye. G-O-Y-E. Go ye. And it is God's order for you eternally. God's order, go God's O order for you eternally. It is not then a temporary order. It is not a temporary assignment. It is not a temporary commandment, but an eternal one, a permanent one. It is a lifetime responsibility. And if we are going to be blessed eternally, then we must rise up, we must size up, and we must get something done. And we must not continue to do the work the way we have been doing it. Go ye. Go ye, the four letter word again, is godly obedience you embrace. It's something that you embrace. It's not something that you push to A, you push to B, you push to C. It's not something that the pastor should push to the members of the church. It's not something that the members of the church should leave for the pastor alone. It is something that you must obey, I must obey. The pastor and the few members, the leader and those that have been led must obey it. Go ye. Go ye. Then... It's not an optional mandate. It is a must for you. It is a must for me. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Go ye. It's a glorious opportunity to enjoy. It is a privilege for you and for me. Glorious opportunity. You enjoy. The reason I put it that way is God could have sent angels to do this work, but he preferred man to do it. Man ministering to man. Glorious opportunity in the sense that this is the main reason why Jesus left the glories of heaven, came to the world, died for us, went all, the, all, all through the, uh, the streets uh, of Jerusalem, of Judea, of Samaria, and he did the work. When you are doing this work of evangelism, you are walking side by side with the master, the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord will help you. The Lord will help me. Amen. The Lord will help all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we have been given this assignment not because of our education. As a matter of fact, the people that were with Christ at the beginning were illiterate. They were unlearned people. So you cannot say, I cannot do this work or obey this injunction because of my academic background, because I am low on education. It's not something that you cannot do just because of money. No, there was no money Yet the work was done. And then many a times you say, we don't have the manpower. You have the manpower. I need a better one. You have the manpower. You know, I tell myself that the church began with one person. 
And if I can get only one person, the work shall be done. I said the work shall be done. Amen. And you know the one person I need to get? You know the person? I said, who is the person? It's not Jesus. It's you. Tell your neighbor, you. Tell your neighbor, you. You are that one person. You get yourself first. How did I come up with that? Jesus by himself got up and got out, going about, speaking to people, calling Matthew, calling Mark, calling Luke, calling James, calling Andrew. And one by one, he was calling them unto himself. If Christ could do it by himself with the spirit and the power of the Lord, we can get it done. Amen. And it shall be done in Jesus' name. And I told you, it's God's order for you eternally. It's godly obedience you embrace. It's glorious opportunity that you enjoy. Not just that now, understand? Go ye. It's an individual mandate. It's a mandate for you, a mandate for me. Sometimes some people will complain and say, our church is not doing this. Our church is not doing that. It's not about your church. It's about the people in the church, the individual people in the church, including yourself. If your pastor is not evangelistic oriented, evangelistic motivated, what stops you? They didn't give you a position or title in the church. Will your pastor stop you on the street? Will your pastor stop you in the market? Will your pastor stop you in the store? So don't blame it on anybody. Blame it on yourself. And you say, oh Lord, if you can use anybody, you can use me. And he will use you in Jesus' name. Forget about your education, about your grammar, about your accent, about your money, about whatsoever. You can do it and the Lord will give you the grace in Jesus' name. So then, go ye is an individual mandate. Go ye is an institutional mandate. It's a mandate for all of us as a church. All of us as a ministry, it is an international mandate. You shall receive power. Acts 1 8. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and then unto the uttermost part of the earth. It's an international mandate. Go ye. It's an intentional mandate. It's something you do intentionally. It's something you do deliberately. It's something you get out of your closet to get done. It's something you go the extra mile. It's something that you make effort and sacrifices to do, go ye. It's an inspired mandate. You've got to be inspired by the Spirit of the Lord. With the help of the Lord, to be able to get it done, it is somebody who is inspired that can inspire others. If you are a sad and sorrowful person, how can you make others happy? But when you are happy, anywhere you go, you make others happy, happy and somebody here, God, will make you happy. Amen. In the name of Jesus. So then, go ye is a universal thing that we all must do. Not only that, it is an heavenly mandate. An heavenly mandate. An heavenly mandate. God he is commanding you, commanding me, and which I do it in Jesus' name. It is a mandate for the re redemption of humanity, salvation of souls, a mandate for the redemption of communities, a mandate. You remember the city of Nineveh uh, were to be destroyed, and uh, uh, actually a nation, but God had mercy on them. Sent Jonah to them and redeemed that nation. And it could be a nation, a community, uh, a town, or even the whole world. For God loved the, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, only one, only one begotten Son. And you can be that Son today. That God will give to the world. You can be another Paul that God will give to the world. Another Peter that God will give to the world and God will use you in Jesus' name. You know, 
in the book of Matthew chapter 11 verse 28, Christ said, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now, the same one that said, come unto me, is the same one that is now saying, go. Do you get it? So, when he called you, he called you for a purpose. He told Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. He said, before I formed thee in the womb, I knew thee. And before you came out of your mommy's tummy, I have called you and ordained you a minister to the world. Pay attention here. Don't miss something here. You miss this, you may miss the best for your life. I want to make a profound statement. If you don't believe it, that's up to you. Before, pay attention here. Your father and your mother came together as husband and wife. You have been existing. Are you paying attention here? This body you are seeing here is not the me. The body you have that we look at, you are tall, you are short, you are you are you are you are, you are, you are light complexion, you are dark complexion. That is something you put on when you were coming to the world. For identification purposes here on earth. Are you listening to me? That then tells me, because, listen, if for any reason I drop dead right now while speaking, will my head look different? Will my hand look different? Will my leg look different? You will still be seeing the same person, but the real man is gone. Pay attention. You, the real man, God sent you here for a purpose. You must fulfill your purpose in Jesus' name. Amen. And when you were coming, and that's why I said don't miss this. Because an unknown purpose leads to misuse and abuse. When you don't know your purpose on earth, you live your life just anyhow. You do things that are not necessary. And time is wasted. God has given you and given me, all of us, the exact amount of time we need to fulfill our mission on earth. How you use the time now depends on you, depends on me. Listen, anything and everything we are craving for in the world are things we met in the world. Are you listening? And there are things we are going to leave behind in the world. Those things we met in the world trying to get our attention, trying to deter us, distract us, deceive us, and deprive us of the best of God for our life are the things wanting to hinder our eternity with God in glory. So be wise and think of the way you live your life. The life of a man does not consist in the abundance of the things that he has. Once you have what you can eat, what, what you can drink, bless the Lord and serve the Lord. Amen? And so the Lord is speaking to you and speaking to me that we need to get up and get something done. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 16 verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world. And preach the gospel to every creature. Every creature. Every creature. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. You know, many years back, and I'm saying this with all humility, when I was called to get into the pastorate, and I looked around, and I saw the state of the work in the country. And I began to pray, Lord, how can this be done better? And I remember 
I spoke with our leader then on some things that can be done. But you know, I was too low on the ladder. The Lord will move you up higher. And so, I guess the time was not right. And there was nothing to fight about. Praise the Lord. But the time came. Somebody said the time came. That the door became open. And I said, Lord, years back, this is what you laid on my heart to move the work forward. And now the door is open. Yet there are many adversaries, but God is greater than all the adversaries. Praise the Lord. And as I speak right now, we have planted more than 45 churches in this country. By God's grace. More than 45 churches. Between May that we finished our convention and now, we are already working on four new churches. And I'm saying this, that the Lord can use you. Few days ago, one of the churches, we went there in the particular state. First time in that place. First time. In that particular city. I've been to the city, but that city, first time. And uh, knew nobody. But the work must start in this place. And then the person with me, driving, and we passed somebody. We've been driving around, driving around, and then we got to that place. We passed the person and said, make a U-turn. And then he made a U-turn. I said, we need to talk with this individual here. And she was on the phone. And then she came. How are you doing? To cut a long story short, I said, we are missionaries. Who are you? You are a mom. M-O-M, you are a mom. What is mom? Men on mission. If you don't understand that, you will be doing the wrong thing in life. The wrong thing in life. And uh, I said we are missionaries and we are pastors. And I said, this is my first time here. I'm here to start a church. And then spoke with her and she said, can I get your number? Sure. And then we exchanged numbers. And by herself, she said, maybe I'll be part of that church. And then we got to a particular hotel the same day, looking for a place to rent. Many of you are looking for a place to rent to start a church. And until you get somewhere, you are not ready. That's so why I'm sharing this with you. And then at the hotel, the lady over there at the counter, do you have this place, meeting place, uh, space and all the rest? And then after that, I said, well, we are starting our church anew. We don't have one here yet. And then, will you be my member? And she said, oh, I'm already thinking of a church I needed to join. The souls are there waiting for you. But if you don't go, you don't encounter them. And the Lord will give us breakthrough in Jesus' name. Amen. Last year, we went to a particular place, Kentucky, to be more precise. I've never been there before. But then, no church, no deeper life church over there. And then I called a brother, one of the pastors, and said, uh, you, we are going to start a new work in Kentucky. And by the grace of God, uh, you are going there. So, I'm moving you from where you are. You are going to Kentucky. When you get to Kentucky, there is no turkey to eat there. If there be any turkey at all, it will be turkey of souls. Praise the Lord. And so, he said, yes, sir. And then he took off. I didn't tell him I was coming. I also took off. I got there before him. And then I said, brother, how are you doing? How is the journey? He's doing well. How long will it take you to get to, uh, I think he said, Lexington or so. Uh, and then he said, he gave me the time. 
I said, it's okay. The Lord will bring you uh, down safely. I said, I'm here on the ground. He said, what? Pastor, you didn't tell me you were coming. I said, yes, I didn't tell you, but I'm here already. Last year. Today, we have two church locations in Kentucky. Jesus, use me. Oh, Lord, don't refuse me. Surely there's a work that I can do. Even though it humbles, not help my way to crumble. Though the price be great, I work for you. Once you make yourself available, the Lord will use you. You have prayed enough for anointing. The anointing is there, but for nothing to do. The anointing is there, but you're not putting it to work. Until you understand and believe and act on the fact that these signs shall follow them that believe. You will lay your hands upon the sick, they will recover. Where you will cast out devils and demons. The devils and demons are there. If you don't go cast them out, they remain there. The sick people are there. They remain there. See. But when you come to understand that this is not talking about pastor, it's not talking about that sister, it's talking about me. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over every power of the enemy and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. I need a better one. Yeah. When you believe that it's for you, and you go out in the strength and the power of the Lord, something will begin to happen in Jesus' name. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. And out of season. It says, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Acts chapter 5, verse 20 says, Go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. You just got out of jail. What next do you need to do? Hide your head. You just got out of trouble for preaching the gospel. What then do you need to do? Step back and take a leave. The Bible says no. You just came out of that trouble. You just came out of that rejection. You just came out of that opposition. You just came out of whatsoever. Go. Don't wait. Don't stay. Go and stand in the temple, in the public, not a hiding place. And then preach all the words of this life. The Lord will make it so for you in Jesus' name. And then he's saying in Matthew chapter 10, verse 7, as you go, and somebody here will go, Amen. preach, say, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. We shall be considering all I've been giving you is what? Preamble. I was sweating the ground. Praise the Lord. Are you ready for me today? Are you ready to go? Are you ready for action? You, the way you are answering is not like you are ready. Are you ready? To go this day, this hour, and do the master's work. The Lord will help you in Jesus' name. I look at four points. That's to tell you that we are in for it. How many points do we normally get? And today we are getting additional blessing for somebody. How can I come to Minnesota after so many years and you don't get combo? 
Amen. Amen. You will get it to the fullest in Jesus' name. Amen. So we are going to be looking at the priority of evangelism. The purpose of evangelism. The prerequisite of evangelism. And then the power for evangelism. The Lord will give us all this in Jesus' name. The prerequisites. John chapter 4, verse 34. Hear the master speaking there. And he is speaking concerning you and concerning me as well. John chapter 4, verse 34. It says, and Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. That is supposed to be your own meat. Your own duty, your own responsibility, and the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. John chapter 9, verse 4. John chapter 9, the fourth verse over there. The Bible tells us, I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day, the night cometh. When no man can walk. The night cometh. You know, I learned a lesson a few years back. And anywhere I go, I share with people. I share with people. I told you earlier on that you have been existing before you came to the world as a human being. The spirit in you is what makes you to be breathing and living and moving. At the end of your mission on earth, you will drop this which you got in the world and then you return back to your maker to give an account. And there was a beloved friend of mine from another ministry over there in the Washington area. He knows me very well. We talk a lot. And uh, he knows a little bit of what I do. And then they will come and say, Pastor, uh, please, I need to talk to you. You are, you are going too fast and too far. You need to slow it down. You need to slow it down. Uh, we need to be careful so that we can stay here for long. Stay here for long. And then one day, another pastor passed on to glory. And we went for the funeral. And right at the graveyard, after the internment, we're still at the graveyard. And then he came to me. He said, Pastor, you see what I've been telling you? That we need to be careful. He said, look at Pastor XYZ. Now he's gone. He said, the work will continue. Slow it down. I looked at him eyeball to eyeball. I said, Pastor, I said, I am still young. Do I look old? I said, yeah, do I look old? I'm still a young man. Amen. Moses was called at the age of 80. Praise God. I said, I'm still young. And I said, you make hay while the sun shines. I said, I do not know what tomorrow holds. I do not know. It may not be about living long. You will not even be healthy for too long. Yeah. I mean, God is a healer. But supposing he chooses not to heal you. Supposing you, go, you, you, you get paralyzed. Supposing something happened to your eyes. Supposing something happened to your ears. Yes, I can tell you, God has done this and done that and done that, this healing, that healing, that deliverance and all the rest. Yes. But if it comes to your turn, it's not your power. It's his power. Do you hear what I just said? It's his power. If he chooses, no. That's what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that's what they said. They said, our God is able to deliver us. But even if he chooses not to do it, it's not because he doesn't have the power, but because in his wisdom, he chooses not to. He said, they said, yet we will not bow to your idol. Are you listening to me this morning? 
And I said, Pastor, I'm not slowing down. I'm going to walk more. And stay up more. And labor more. We left the place. Not long after that, he was invited to come to go minister in London. And then they always invite him. And this particular time, shortly after we had that encounter, he was still there for that weekend revival. One of the days he took ill. He began to have headache. Within a few hours of having headache and getting to the hospital, he was gone. He said he had hemorrhage, bleeding in the head. I looked at it. I said, Lord, help me. Help me. The Lord will help us. That every moment of your life and of my life will be serving the Lord. And the Lord will do it in Jesus' name. Priority. Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you in law. And look at it. And behold, I am with you. Challenges will be there, but I'm with you. Opposition will be there, but I'm with you. People from the church will stand up against you, but I am with you. And the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And the Lord will keep you. Amen. If this then is a priority, because we're looking at the first point, the priority of evangelism. If this is a priority, then we need to understand that evangelism takes priority over our daily food. That's what Jesus said in that John chapter 4, that verse 34, when he said, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Evangelism takes priority, pay attention here, over buying a church building. Buying a church building. You know, recently we were to start a church somewhere. And uh, it was a challenge getting a place to rent. You know what we did? A few people, about seven of them, went to McDonald's. Praise the Lord. Bought breakfast McDonald's. We sat down. Two hours of service with him. And the church started. By the following week, we got a place and then we moved in. Praise the Lord. There was a time we had issue with where we were renting. Somebody said yesterday that it's a terrible thing to be renting. That will give you your own property. But that should not take the place of evangelism. It is, the property is for people to move into. Are you listening to me? If you don't have people, you have a building, you have nothing. But then, we had the church already, there was nowhere to fellowship, we were just kicked out of where we were using. We were given like a week or less to get out. Where do we go? You know where we had our services for the next few months? Outside in the open air under the tree. Not in Africa, Atlanta, Georgia, United States of A. Wherever there is a will, there will always be a way. I've had cases whereby a place of meeting is an issue and we have to do internet service. Just be creative. Be creative. Be creative. And you will see great things happening in Jesus' name. And if you are waiting for many people to start, you may never, never get started. Now I want to test whether you're a good student or not. How many people do you need to start a church? You need one person. And who is that one person? Me. 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 We went to a place to start a church. We've never been before. And then we were only three, myself, 
the person that is going to be the pastor over there. Can you imagine? They say you're a pastor over there. Oh, Lord, have mercy. If you were the one, how do you, oh, they hate me. They do this, they do that. Be positive in your reasoning and thinking. Myself, himself, and then his son. And then we got started that Sunday. We got there Saturday. We went around the city. We took over the place by faith through prayer. I need an amen. amen. We checked into an hotel. And then that hotel where we checked into, the following day, Sunday, we went to the hotel lobby, the three of us, and then we had our first Sunday service. And then we did the hymn. We did the search the scripture. We did the question and answer. Three people. And then we did moderation. And then we collected our tithe and offering. I need a better one. And then we preached. Praise God. And I said, the church has come to stay. And I carried my load. And I went back. And the following Sunday, the song couldn't go with him. The meaning how many people? One. To God's glory, from that very place, where I'm talking about this last convention, we had between now 9 and 15 people that came from there for the convention. I'm sharing this with you. You know, it's easy to share testimony of her. I was healed. I was delivered. That happened. I got a big business. How, when last did we come to share testimony of soul winning? Our real calling. Every other thing are just to support the real world. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And every other thing shall be added unto you. These signs shall follow them that believe. How I many of you really, really want God to use you here? To heal the sick. To break yokes or loose bounds. To be a blessing to your generation. Thank you. Put down your hand. You know the secret to that is going. Go ye is not a stay mandate. Go ye is not a stagnant mandate. Go ye is a going mandate. And it says, as you go, these signs shall do what? As you are going in front, the signs are following after you. And that is when you now hear somebody say, I pray for the sick, they got healed. Why won't they get healed? Why won't they get healed? Because you are in obedience to the word of the Lord. And the Lord will use you in Jesus' name. Amen. So understand, it takes priority over your food, over your education, over your marriage, over your career, over your family, over your life ambition, over ceremonies, over funeral. You know, I'm surprised at this time and age. People pay more attention to ceremonies, birthday party. Baby christening and all kinds of things. And you don't attend that ceremony, they don't love me. No, you don't love God. Because the next thing, they pack their bag, they are going to a place where they love them. Carnal love, sensual love, earthly love, not eternal love. I can tell you. I can tell you that out of our five children, we just only one, the first one, that you call people and say, okay, come and celebrate with us. The baby has come, we we'll sit down, God bless the baby, in Jesus' name, amen. What's the name? Blessing, miracle, signs and wonders. What's the name of your own child? Praise the Lord. And they say, because they didn't show up, 
the people you are inviting for the ceremony, you invite them to church and see if they will come. So, we are so much concerned about the flesh than about the things of God. And I think it's time for the church to wake up. So, it's a mandate to send people, to send men, to send mature, matured men. It's a mandate that made Jesus to leave heaven and come to the world. It's a mandate that made Christ to weep over Jerusalem. It's a mandate without which man is hopeless. That's why we must make it a priority. It's, it's something that we must do to those that feel they are accomplished in life, preach to them. And then there are those that are abominable, still preach to them. Don't write off anybody. Don't, don't think somebody can never be saved. Only God knows the end of every humanity. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. That then means stop procrastinating. That then means stop complaining about there is no manpower, no manpower. You know, I don't know why I'm just sharing all this with you sometimes, many a times really. I leave the church over there the days. I put somebody in church, and then I go to the field. I go to the field. You have heard me enough. Here's somebody. And then we get started. And uh, once that is done, put somebody there. God always provides somebody. When you, God's work, done God's way, we never lack God's resources. Are you paying attention here? In all of this, I must tell you, not because we had the money. We made most of the moves without money. Just faith and trust in God. Faith and trust in God. And in these regions, after this convention, they'll be breaking out. To the right, it will break forth. To the left, you break forth. Front and back, you'll be breaking forth in Jesus' name. Are you ready for God to use you? Are you ready for God to use you? Now, the way I'm going to know whether you are ready or not is this. You're going to go to your pastor, to your overseer, and then, you remember that song? You remember the song? Sing it, let me hear you. G God bless you. Oh, Lord, don't refuse me. Now, wait, 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 wait. Your pastor is now the little Lord. Jesus, use me. Little Lord, don't refuse me. Praise the Lord. Surely there is a work that I can do with my family. Even though it humbles, Lord, help my will to crumble. Though the price be great, I walk for you. Use me. Jesus, use me. Use me. Jesus, use me. Take this life of mine. Only one life. Take this life of mine. And you. Lord Jesus, I pray take this life of mine and use me. And it doesn't matter whether you are a man or a woman, you can use you. In the last days I fought of my spirit of an offer. And your sons and your daughters will prophesy. And your old men and women will it doesn't matter whether you're a lady or you're a man. God can use you. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care. I don't care. If God says, I'll pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, I believe he's pouring his spirit upon all flesh. If you're a woman, you have the spirit of God, you have the fear of God, you have the word of God, you have the mandate from heaven, go. And he will go with you. In the name of Jesus. Don't 
time the demonic forces are there, they have been there before you were born. Even where you are, you have not gone, they are there oppressing you. Am I communicating? But when you get involved with the war, then you know more about the activities of the enemy and then you are awake at all times and you take your position. And you take your position. Don't tell me that where well, some people are opposing the war, they've been opposed, they oppose Christ. Why won't they oppose you? But did they prevail? Upon this rock I build my church and the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. Amen. What is the purpose of evangelism? Number one, that's my second point. Rescue, to rescue and to redeem lost souls. Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. What is the purpose of evangelism? To reconcile man with God. Man with God. Number three, to restore God's original plan. What was God's original plan? When Adam and Eve were created, every blessed day in the evening, God will come to fellowship with them. But sin separated man from God. And God has been longing to have that fellowship back. So when you do your part and I do my part, that fellowship is restored in Jesus' name. Let me tell you the secret. Do I tell you? Where two or three are gathered together in my name. So when you are in the midst of the believer, God is there. So you want the fellowship of the master? Get into this thing we are talking about. And you see God move in Jesus' name. God wants us to do it that the backslidden stay our saints might be revived. Revived. So number one is rescuing and redemption of lost soul. Number two, reconciliation of man with God. Number three, restoration of God's original plan. Number four, revival of backsliding saints. Number five, realization of God's glory, authority, and power in Genesis chapter one. Verses 26 to 28. The Bible tells us, let us make man in our own image after our likeness. And let them have dominion, dominion, dominion. That is the, the realization of the glory and the authority and the power that I'm talking about. Dominion over the fish of the sea and the fowl of the air and the cattle and over all the earth. And every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Listen to this. You want the real blessing of God upon your life, get involved. When you get involved, there will be realization. You will realize this thing. The authority and the dominion that God has spoken about. You know, I tell people, and I tell them, I'm not trying to say don't come to me for prayer. That is my calling. I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. But you also develop yourself to a point whereby you can pray for yourself. Develop yourself to a point whereby you can pray for other people. Other people. Somebody came the other day for, for, for prayer, and I said, I'm sorry, I won't have time. Uh, I didn't plan for this, but I would schedule you to come for prayer. Uh, but uh, before you go, uh, then I will just go to have a snapshot prayer. You know? Amen. And then as soon as I said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, boom, the person was on the floor. And the person was, what moved like this? That was a snake in the person. Amen. And not that I was fasting. Amen. And actually, I already told her that 
you have to come back. I didn't know that God has destined that day to be the day for her deliver. Amen. And then in my ignorance, I called the brother that used to be my prayer warrior leader. And then I said, come and join us here. And as soon as he opened the door and saw somebody like this on the floor, <laughs> he ran for cover. <laughs> but you know, at that point, you, it's, not a, it's not a talking time to anybody. I just left him. <laughs> left him. Praise God. The other time, your mom came, a minister from another church. He said, he knew a prayer, and he told me the story. And then we began to pray. And right on the spot, he began to vomit blood, life blood. Life blood. What happened is, he went somewhere. You, hey, those of you that are looking for prayer, where there are no prayer, you better be careful. You better be careful. He went to a particular, whether pastor or prophet or whatsoever, to pray for him, not knowing that the man was using evil power. And the man laid hands on him and downloaded the spirit of Python into, uh, on him. And that was his problem. When I was praying, I said, spirit of uh, false prophecy, come out. Oh, he will start prophesying. Oh, no, no, no. You better be careful so that they don't compromise your trouble for you. But develop, tell somebody, develop yourself. Let me tell you the truth. Real men of God pray to God. Are you paying attention here? Without adding anything. If anybody in this church is telling you, go and bring water, go and bring oil, go and bring salt. That person is your faulty. Are you listening to me? Because the Bible says, at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of the glory of God the Father. Praise the Lord. We are praying for somebody who was suicidal, and as we are praying the prayer, she ran towards the concrete wall, wanting to go and bang her head, and I just said, in the name of Jesus, talk. And she had no other option than to stop. Are you listening to me? These signs shall follow them that believe. When you are going through the work of the Lord, whatever the challenge on the way, the Lord will give you the victory in Jesus' name. Amen. You know why I'm sharing all this? So that somebody will get up from here and get out and say, yes, it's time for evangelism. All the fears in you, and uh, I give you this word, all the divergences the enemy has deposited in you, we are destroying them in Jesus' name. Amen. So, you realize that glory of God, the power of God, the authority of God. You will also be able to reclaim, or man generally will be able to reclaim heavenly eternity. Heavenly eternity to make it to heaven in Jesus' name. Matthew 19, 29, and everyone that had forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or none, for my name's sake shall receive an, an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. Amen. This is the will of God for you. And some of you, I can tell you of people that you say, hey, because of this program, I don't have time for God. Because of that, I don't have time for God. You will have time for God. Whatever you give up for God, God will bless you in abundance in Jesus' name. Because said, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. How? How? It, how? Feed this soul. Feed this soul. When this